welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. Today I want to talk about working with fabric panels. We design tons of quilts each year focusing on these panels which are just, they're all over the industry. This is one called Timber Nomies from Henry Glass and they make great centers for quick and easy projects for kids, adults. Um, they come with lots of stunning artwork. These little guys are so cute on the fabric but then they're just even cuter when they're blown up into a panel. But these panels can be kind of tricky to work with. Uh, a lot of things can happen from the time the artwork is developed to the time you get it in your hands at home. Uh, and they can, dis they can be distorted from how they're rolled on a bolt. Sometimes they're printed a little bit different size than what we get when we design the patterns. Uh, this was a pattern I designed last year using this collection. And so what we do here in the studio to make it easier for you when you get this at home is we always will put a cheater border around the panel. And some of you may have done these panels in the past and wonder why do we cut a border, put it onto the center, and then trim the whole piece down. And the reason we do that so is so if the panel comes in a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, we can adjust in that first border and make it match up to whatever piece border goes around it. So today I'm going to demonstrate how we do that here in the shop in the studio and then um, walk you through cutting the panel, putting your first border on, and how to trim it up. So like I said, we're going to work with Timber Nomies. This is a beautiful line by Shelley Kaminsky. Um, I love her artwork. It's so cute and whimsical. But this is the Timber Nomies panel. So first thing you need to do is when you get your pattern, this is a free download at henryglass.com, is the first direction is fussy cut the panel. So my panel is 23 by 27. Before I cut this, I always take a tape measure and measure it just to see that everything is matching. If it's not matching slightly, you can adjust cutting your panel to match to make it look pretty and then we'll trim up the outer border. Or um, if it's a lot, you may need to check the math and see how you can adjust that first border. So first things first, I've already measured this so I know it is what I'm cutting is 23 by 27 and on this one that actually worked out to be exactly where this black printed line is. So I don't have to really worry about measuring, I can just use my straight edge on the black line and print it. If you didn't have that to work out so pretty, you could Make sure you measure um, from center out. If you have a tape measure, you could then put a pin on either side. So if this is 27 inches, I could put a pin right here and then measure 27 inches, put a pin on this side and use the pins as my guide for my straight edge. Um, or you could fold it in half, though that, that gets a little trickier. So I would recommend measuring it with a tape measure and using the pin, or measuring it first to see if there's actually a printed line that you can use as a guide. A lot of times we will try to be a quarter inch outside the black line, on the black line, or a quarter inch inside the black line. When I design the quilts, we're always looking at what's the easiest way for people to be able to cut them when the fabric comes in. Uh, usually we're designing these quilts months before the fabric comes, so that's where the distortion in size can occur, and that is how why we put that border on. So I'm going to lay my ruler on the black line, and I'm going to cut across, and that's the first cut. And I always like to cut the short sides first and then the long sides because then I don't have such a big long piece to fight with. And again, lining up the ruler with the black line on the panel. I'll get rid of that one. And then last, we'll do the two sides. If you're not familiar with Shelly's work, she does all kinds of adorable bunnies and bears and different jungle animals. And then this is her latest line with the gnomes and it's just really, really cute. I know she has a couple more lines coming out with gnomes, um, but 
her artwork is definitely uh, leans towards the, the panels because then you can really see how cute her characters are. All right, so now that we have this all cut, the first thing we'll do is we're gonna put our first border on and then we'll come back and trim it. But to put your first borders on, always pin your borders. Uh, you can measure, you can cut these to length like the pattern says. It says cut them 27 inches um, for the sides. I tend to just lay it on let me show you how I do a border. This is because we do so many quilts a year. We do over 100 quilts a year. So I do take some shortcuts and this is my shortcut for borders. I start at one end and I pin it in place. You wanna always pin your borders because when you go to sew it, if they're not pinned, the bottom fabric goes through the machine faster than the top fabric. And if it's not pinned in place to hold it, you could end up gathering the fabric into the border and then that's why you get a ripply border. So to avoid ripply borders, we always pin, then I trim off the end. Now, if you were always taught to measure your borders, do so. Um, if you want a shortcut, you can try this method. Uh, if you're a perfectionist, do it the way you like because we all do things differently, but this is how I do my borders and it's quick easy and we get them on there and they usually are just the way we want them so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to sew these borders on sew the top and bottom borders on and then i'll be back to show you how to trim it all up all right so we have our floating borders on the quilt and now we need to trim this up to size before we add the border blocks around the quilt how we do that is we measure the panel with borders and this measures 27 inches and we need to trim it down to 25 and a half so you could fold this in half aligning your two edges Make sure they align 25 and a half. Take that and divide it by two. So 12 and three quarters is what you need each half to measure. So you could do it that way and take a ruler and measure 12 and three quarters and square it up. That's one way to do this. Another way to do this is to take the 27 inches, which is our finished width, <clears throat> minus 25.5 which is our desired width and then divide that by two and you know you have to take three quarters of an inch off each side so that makes it a little more accurate because right now these measure two and a quarter minus three quarters means we are trimming them up to be one and a half inch finish so what I like to do to double check before I cut anything is put a pin in there. Always measure twice, cut once, so you don't screw up your quilt because that cannot be fun. You'd have to take the borders off and redo it. So two and a quarter minus three quarters is one and a half. So let's measure one and a half from the panel, stick a pin in, and then take the tape measure, and that is 25 and a half from the pin to pin. So three quarters of an inch off each of the sides will get us that measurement. So let's go ahead and take that off. So we lay it out. Lay the ruler on at the three quarter inch mark. Trim it up. So either way, any way you do it, there's a little math involved. Like I said, you can fold it in half, divide your finished measurement by two, so 25 and a half divided by two is 12 and three quarters, and then you can lay the ruler on the fold and square it up. Or you could do a little more math, but be more accurate cutting it, and that is, 
take your actual size, your finished size, divide that number, take the actual size, subtract the finished size, and then that number gets divided by two, and that would be what you cut off at each side. And double check. <laughs> I've cut these before, and then you have to sit there, rip the border off, and reapply, reattach a new border, and then retrim it. So. And again, why do we do these cheater borders on panels? Well, one, we get the artwork six months before the actual panel is printed and things happen. It touches a lot of people touch it after we deal with it. So the panel could come in a little bit different. Um, it can get distorted if, if whoever rolls it on the bolt rolls it too tight. Um, or it just didn't print the way it should have printed. Uh, that all comes from the factories. It's not the fabric companies that do it. It's the factories that are printing it. So after years of designing these and having pattern panels come in the wrong size, we now use the rule of thumb of putting a floating border on all our panels. It also makes it easier for us because we do check the panels once they come in. The fabric companies will sometimes send us the panels to remeasure. And for us to change the pattern, it's a lot easier to change a pattern with the floating borders because all we have to do is change one border and the rest of the quilt is still uh, stays the way it was. So again, we're going to check now the other way. The other way with our borders on it measures 31 inches and we are trimming this measurement to be 30 and a half. So that's nice and easy. It's 31. We need to get to 30 and a half. So we are going to take a quarter inch off each end and that'll take care of that side. So because 31 minus 30 and a half is a half inch divided by two is a quarter inch. So we'll just take that quarter inch off and this panel will be ready to have its, the rest of the quilt done around it. We also do this with the little square panels. Um, you know, any kind of thing, borders, if the borders could possibly come in a different length, we will make sure we kind of estimate that in our design to make it all so much easier for you guys when you get it. So if you ever get a panel that measures a little off, double check it with our floating borders and you're probably just fine to cut the panel the way you desire and adjust our border as needed. Alright, well I hope now we got this all cut. We're going to go ahead and move on to assembling the quilt. But now our panel should measure. Let me double check this. 25 and a half by 30 and a half. So we're all set. Here's our little Timber Nomies panel with the borders all put on. And we are ready for the next step. So the next step is to take these squares and we're going to sew them together into the two side borders. One gets, let's see here, these are just the cutest fabrics. One gets an F square. E square. So on this side we're going to do F, E, a long D. These beavers are just the best. They're little hats and noses. They're so cute. So there's that. Then we do a C and another F. So we'll go over, we'll sew this together, and that makes the left side border. And for the right side border, we're going to use an F, then a C. This is a great quilt if you're just starting out in quilting because it's easy peasy. Just sewing some squares together and rectangles to make your borders. There's an E, 
followed by another F. So we will go sew these borders up and I'll come back, we'll pin them on and then we'll be ready to do the top and bottom borders. All right, so now I've got the side borders sewn. So we're gonna add those on. Let's see here, this is the right side. So pin each end. And center. Those on and then we're ready to piece our top and bottom borders. All right, so we have the top and bottom borders sewn onto the panel. And the next step is to put on all of the solid borders. These are just strips that have all been cut um, and they're, they're going to border out the quilt. This one is mostly borders. I think there's four more borders or five more borders that we're going to be putting on this quilt. And for each border, you're going to need to look at the measurement to see if they need to be pieced because we cut all the strips with the fabric. So the next border is another solid red border followed by the white snowflakes, then followed by the bias plaid and then the red snowflakes. These are um, all the coordinates that come in the line. They, they go with these little gnomes. They're just adorable. Um, but we're going to need to piece them before we put them on the border. So when you have a border that is between 42 and 60 inches, how I do the math for the patterns is I usually will figure out that it needs to be a strip and a half for each side. If your borders are 60 to 84 inches, then two strips will get you your side borders, um, two strips per side. So here I'm showing you how to do a diagonal border, which is you put them together at a right angle and you sew from the upper left to lower right corner. And then when you flip it out, you'll have a diagonal seam. Uh, it is easier for your eye to skip over a diagonal seam, over a straight seam. So in this case, um, unless it is a striped border, I would always recommend doing a diagonal seam. So I'm going to sew all these borders together and then in to the right lengths, and then we're going to go ahead and trim them. Then we're going to add all the borders to the quilt, and we'll be ready to show it to you. All right, so here it is, all ready to go to the quilter. We're gonna have Sue Mitchell quilt this. She's gonna do snowflakes all over it. I think it's a nice, quick, easy way to do a basic quilt like this. The pattern, again, is free on the Henry Glass website and it is called Timber Nomi's Quilt One. We'll be back in a sec to show you the finished quilt. Here it is, back from Sue Mitchell, all quilted and bound. Our sweet timber gnomes are all ready for winter. We did a snowflake and swirl all over. It's great to pick a basic quilting pattern to go with a basic quilt. It sort of helps you showcase the fabrics. Uh, here's a close-up of the snowflakes and swirls as well as you can check out the gnomes and the plaid and just what a great job Sue did. This is a free pattern from Henry Glass. It's Timber Nomi's Quilt One. Fabric should be in the stores t June of 2020 and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe below so you're notified every time we drop a new video. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.